Hi Sharptown, happy Wednesday. My name is Dawn Jeffers and I am the Children's Director here at Sharptown and I'm super excited that you have joined us today for our daily messages. We have been working through a series of hymns of the church for the past two weeks and today we're going to continue on in that series and we are going to check out the hymn, The Solid Rock. Now, I love to hear stories of how people come to faith. I get so excited when I get to hear hopeless stories of how then God comes in and transforms them into something of beauty. So this is a great story to share. Edward Moat, his story is an example of this. He did not grow up in a Christian home. Actually, his parents were owners of a pub in London, and um, he was often neglected by his parents. Edward said that he actually was ignorant to the faith and had no idea that there even was a God. And his parents were known to be hostile towards the faith. When he was sent one day to be an apprentice with a cabinet maker, the cabinet maker took the time to teach young Edward about the gospel of Jesus. He quickly then gave his heart to Christ, and by the age of 18, he was baptized. He took his faith very seriously, and he was always ready to learn more. One day, he was on his way to work, and he decided that he wanted to write a hymn. Um, okay, so he wants to write a hymn. And so by the end of the day, he had written four verses and the chorus to the song, The Solid Rock. Not long after, Edward went to visit his friend, and his friend's wife was very ill. And during the visit, his friend said, ah, I really want to be able to sing a hymn today. And so Edward reached into his pockets and pulled out the paper that he had written these verses and this course. And he sang this song to his friend's wife. They quickly fell in love with it. And so Edward decided, hey, I'm going to make more copies of this. And by 1865, 1863, sorry, it was the start and became very popular to this hymn, The Solid Rock. Isn't God so good? I love stories like that. This chorus simply states, On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. This reminds me of the words that were spoken by Jesus in Matthew chapter 7 about the wise builder and the foolish builder. So I want to read that verse to you, that parable to you, and I'm going to read it to you out of the message translation. It's a little bit different, but sometimes I think it's really fun to hear it in a different way, especially when it's a common story that we've heard, to be able to hear different words to it. So here we go. This is Matthew chapter 7. It says, These words I speak to you are not incidental additions to your life. Homeowner improvements to your standard of living. They are foundational words. Words to build a life on. If you work these words into your life. You are like a smart carpenter who built his house on solid rock. The rain poured down. The river flooded. A tornado hit. But nothing moved that house. It was fixed to the rock. But if you just use my words in Bible studies and don't work them into your life. You were like a stupid carpenter who built his house on the sandy beach. When the storm rolled in and the waves came up, it capsulized like a house of cards. Now, here's something that you may not know about me. I'm going to share a little inside story of my life. I grew up in the home of a carpenter. My dad has uh, been in the carpentry business for over 45 years now. And there were many times that our whole family um, was part of this carpentry work. I remember as a young child complaining to my parents because we would spend our entire weekends working on houses when all of my friends were out 
having fun. And that wasn't fair. But now I look back on my life and I am so thankful for the way that I was raised. I feel like it was because of those decisions my parents made of putting us to work that I now have a good work ethic. I have the knowledge of knowing how to swing a hammer properly. I know the difference between a Phillips head screwdriver and a flathead screwdriver. The importance of a straight line and the importance of a solid foundation. My dad really likes to find the oldest, most beat up houses to buy and then restore into absolutely beautiful homes. Actually, the house that we currently live in today, the one that I'm in now, um, was a pro product of my dad's work. This house was nasty. It was a creepy house in Alloway. It um, was so ugly and so beat up. And um, when my husband Barry and I were engaged, we started looking for a home. And my dad drove me up to the front of this yard and he said, what about this one, Dawn? This one could be really fun to restore. And I remember thinking my dad was completely insane. And why would he put his daughter in a house like that? Um, but then I quickly remembered how um, my dad had awesome quality of work. And we have done this before where we've taken these houses and we've turned them into something beautiful. And so the process began and we took several months and we restored this house into the home that it is today. So this was the first time that my husband Barry had ever been in a situation like this. Um, and he, he took it in. He fell in love with this idea and the, the work of building a house up. So with all that being said, big news in the Jeffers household. Barry and I, a few months ago, we purchased a house in Alloway that is ugly and nasty and beat up. And we decided, hey, let's fix this house up. And so now my kids are the ones who are complaining that everyone else is out having fun and we're working. But really they are having a lot of fun doing this house. Um, but here's the thing about houses. They can look stunningly beautiful on the outside, but without a solid rock foundation, they could crumble at any storm. We're currently at the point with our house today that um, we have ripped everything out of the inside of the house. Everything is out. There's no interior walls. There's no floor. Everything is out. There's no stairs. Um, and we're getting right down to the foundation. We needed to know that what the, we needed to know what the foundation looked like. So we had to expose it first and make sure that it was solid. So there's no point in building a house up unless the foundation is rock solid. So we have laid concrete. We have stabilized the pillars. We have added block work. All of this stuff so that we now have a solid place to then build our house. You know, foundations are crucial to homes but they're also crucial to our lives. And so my question is, what is the foundation for which you're building your life? What are we building our life upon? On Christ, the solid rock I stand. Christ needs to be our foundation. The word of God needs to be the basis for which we are building our lives. If we were to build our lives on anything else, on popularity, on success, on making the most money, it would be like sand. Our foundation would be weak. And then when, the, when life gets hard and <clears throat> the rain pours and the winds blow and the floods rise, our lives become unstable and they would fall. When COVID hits, when quarantine remains, when 
our jobs end, when the money stops, when our relationships break, when our world is full of more hate than love. It's impossible for us to stand strong. The Bible speaks clearly to the importance of building our lives upon the rock. It will stand the test of time. And this is all because of what Christ did for us and his unfailing, his unending grace in our lives. And so the first verse of this hymn says, My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. Our hope is in Christ alone and what he did on that cross. We cannot trust in the things of this world because they will fail us. But our hope is in Christ alone. The next two verses go on and they say, When darkness veils his lovely face, I rest in his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. His oath, his covenant, his blood, support me in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. There are going to be times when doubts, cares, the darkness of this world try to weaken our faith. God has not left our side. He is still there. He is still working. Our anchor of faith can still hold strong. It is in these times when all around our soul gives way that we need to rest in his unchanging grace. The hymn ends then with this last verse and it says, When he shall come with trumpet sound, Oh, my, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. The hope and the excitement of our future, our eternity, when Christ becomes our solid rock, our solid foundation, when we stand strong amidst the trials of this life, we will be able to stand faultless before the Lord, the Lord because of Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but that is some exciting stuff for me. I want to build my life upon the rock of Christ. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Our world is sinking fast. Thank God for his solid rock foundation on which we can stand. Let's pray, Sharp Town. Dear God, we thank you for the solid foundation that you provide for us, God. Help us to never leave, but to always stand strong in who you are and to build our lives upon your foundation. We thank you, God, that you love us so much for the grace that you've given us that we're able to be able to do this. We thank you and we love you. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. All right, be blessed, Sharptown. Have a great day. Bye.